Hi guys, this is a lecture about the scheme. Let me share the screen. So you can see the PowerPoint right here. So this coming from the textbook chapter five. So this is the uh, the free textbook. You actually can get it from online if you need the uh, link I can provide to you. But you don't need to have the textbook here in my exam. You know, it's all coming from my lecture only. So let's talk about it. So here is a skin uh, covering our body. This is the first line of the body defense. So it prevents us from the intruders, from the bacteria, from the virus, from the heat, from the cold, right? So keep our body uh, safe. That's the first line. So what does it, well, how, how do we make it? How is our, our body produce this skin. So this skin is an, considered as an organ, so-called the largest organ in our body. So what's the components here? So skin basically, the core of the skin is called dermis, right here. But on the surface of dermis, we have another layer called the epidermis. So epidermis is quite important, even though it's quite, compared to the dermis is quite simple. Epidermis contains a lot of the dead cells. So that serve as one shield throughout our whole body. So provide the protection. So we will talk about epidermis, then we talk about dermis, then we talk about the hypodermis. So if you want to give just one, we also will talk about the other associated uh, components, glands. We have two types of sweat glands, acrine sweat glands, and uh, where is that here? Not this one. We have another one, epocrine. It doesn't show it here. Okay. We also have an oil gland. That's this one, sebaceous glands right here. We also have a sensory receptor. That's how you can feel. This is called the tactile receptor. We have a different kind, uh, such as this one, Pacinian corbusol, and also hair follicle receptor. And we also have the hair. We also have the muscle. We also have the blood vessel. We also have the nerve. Uh, so that's a lot of uh, components in our skin. Uh, so say we, these three layer, if we just want to give uh, immediate reflex to the components, or if you want to say one thing about each layer, what would you say? Epi Epidermis, I would say, dead cells, okay? The first thing you need to think about is the dead cells. And then you need to think about how do we replace all those dead cells. Dermis, you need to talk about, you need to think about all these components. All these major components are all in dermis. The glands, the vessels. How about the hypodermis? The major component in hypodermis is the fat. So fat tissues are in hypodermis. All right, first thing first, the epidermis. Yeah, so three layers, epidermis, dermis, and the hypodermis. Epidermis are pack of the epithelium cell, but on the surface is all dead. We will see how we reproduce this epidermis. Dermis contains a lot of the components. Hypodermis are is the house of fat. So epidermis has a uh, couple layer, uh, depending on which kind of skin. Uh, we have two types of skin, 
thin skin. This is most of the skin. Thick skin, this only exists in the palm and also the sole of the feet. So that's uh, where we basically touch the ground the most. If you are a baby, you will use your palm to walk, right? And as an adult, we use our feet. So we have thick skin in both palm of the hand as the source of the feet. All right, so the in, in either type, we have these four layers. In the thick skin, we have one extra layer. So let's give it an overview first, then we will go to one at a time. The very lower portion, deeper layer is called straighten basidi. Then we have the straighten spinosum, straighten granulosum, straighten corneum. So from one, two, three, four, four layer from the bottom to the top, basidi, spinosum, granulosum, corneum. So corneum are layer of dead cell. Don't think it's very thin though. Uh, corneum almost like at least a third to a half of the total skin thickness. So that's actually pretty thick. So that provide a good protection to our skin. We have a very big chunk of the skin is actually contains dead cells. So if we accidentally get rid of it, it doesn't really cause, you know, damage in a way that to cause any, any damage to the cells. Those are already dead cells. So those dead cells still provide function because those dead cells contain cell body, uh, has the cell membrane. So remember, if you forgot about the cell membrane, you need to go back to an earlier lecture to review the cell physiology. And, uh, um, and here, this spatial cell around these four layers, the major cell is carotinocyte. And the, the major function of the carotinocyte is to produce carotene. That is the fibrous protein. So when the cell die, the body contains, the cell body contains a lot of this material, good stuff, okay? It protect, protects our body. The thick skin has all these four layers. And one more, that is the straighten lucidum. So that's make it a little bit thicker. All right, so let's look at this layer. From the bottom to the top, we have the basidi, straighten basidi. Here contains stem cells. That's how we reproduce all these keratinocytes. Here is the keratinocyte. So you can see that these are all keratinocyte. And uh, um, each layer has its own feature. Uh, that's why we separate them. Otherwise they will consider a single same layer, right? Why do we need to separate them? They are all skin, right? It's because that each layer has its feature. Basidi are basal cells. These are stem cells, these reproduce. So the cell continues to divide. When they divide, they push the material up. So they will replace in top of the dead cell, will, the oldest dead cell will go away, while the new one will be replaced by the less older cell, right? And then move on here is the striatum spinosum. These are matured skin cells. The feature here is that first they are alive, so and they are not stem cell. So these are the keratinocyte. Another feature is that they contain tight junction. You probably can see it very closely linked with each other. So they interlocked with each other to provide the skin. Ab above that, we have the granulosum. Uh, and this one, we have some granule. So if you use the microscopic uh, investigation, you will see a lot of the pockets here. So these are the pockets. The aggregation of this keratin, the fibrous protein. 
And if we are in the thick tissue, we also have extra cell. So from here on, you see the nucleus that is still alive, but it's already old. So from here on, you see they are dead because you don't see any nucleus, nucleus anymore. They become just the corpse, just the cell membrane. Inside of it are full of the keratin. Uh, this is also called a process called keratinization that uh, make the cell, they produce the keratin and the gradually just fill the entire cell with the keratin. So that's this copper layer. We also will see some other cells. So the keratin, the basal cells, the stem cell, we also see this uh, melanocyte. These are the cells to produce the melanin that is the foundation of the skin color. And then we also have the Merkel cell. This Merkel cell is sensitive to touch. So when you touch the skin and then it will transduce that pressure to here, it will cause a stimulation to the sensory neuron, send signal to our spinal cord, transduce that electric signal to the brain. So you feel the touch. So that's all these cells. So the major cells here is the keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are derived from the basal cell. The function of the keratinocytes is to produce keratin. And uh, the cell is, the basal cells are located in the stratum basale, the very lower portion. And uh, they divide it, differentiate to become the keratinocytes, then they dying away when they move up to the surface. So that's kind of like showing you that kind of idea here. So from the stratum basale, here we have the basal cells. It gradually move up and uh, in the top, it will die away, okay? So that's that. We also have other cells, uh, two major cells in the epidermis are uh, two other cells. They are not a major cell, but they are important in the epidermis. One is the Merkel cells. This one provide our body skin uh, tactile sensation that we can feel, touch, right? And the, another one is melanocyte. This one produced melanin. Uh, provide the skin color, the foundation of the pigment. This is important for the protection because UV light or if it penetrates the skin, it will cause damage to the underneath tissue. Skin is the protection, so this pigment can absorb. When you see something black, right? Color black, meaning that the light got absorbed. There is no reflection. And so that is the protection. They will absorb the light. So, uh, so that's the protection, melanin. All right, so let's look into each one of the layer. Um, Straighten basale, the deepest layer, the place host the stem cell called the basal cell. This is the deepest of the epidermis. So underneath that has a layer extracellular layer, that's called the basal lamina. It's like a, a sheath between two layer, epidermis, dermis. Underneath that is dermis, okay? And, uh, and uh, uh, this layer is also called the straighten germinativum. That is because that is the layer to proliferate, generate new cells. This layer though, Underneath it is the dermis. However, however this, this separation is not flat straight. The ear separation is formed by papula. So if we look at the picture right here, we can see the epidermis right here, very homogeneous uh, keratinocyte. 
And you can see that this epiderma is the top region here. About here is about half of this layer is the dead cells. Okay. So these epidermis and dermis, these regions are not flat. So epidermis and dermis are not separate with a flat floor. This floor is bumping upside up and down. And uh, this is called the dermal uh, papillae. So dermal papillae, why do we have it you know, bumping up and down? It's because we want to increase the surface area. So these two will counter interact with each other. We also use that to increase the connection between these two layers, epidermis and the dermis. So that's that. And uh, then the following, the upper layer is called the striatum uh, spinosum. Here we have the matured keratinocyte, contains about 10 layer of these uh, keratinocytes. Gradually they move the newer one is in the bottom, the older one are in the top, gradually moving up. What's, what's, about, what's the feature here? Feature here is that these are live cells. So they continue producing the keratin in the cell. These are also heavily interlocked with each other using a, a, a transmembrane protein called Desmosome. So say this is one cell, this is the other cell. They are interlocked using the desmosome. Desmosome is very common in our tissue that when cell cells form good connection, preventing separate as long as we, uh, the tissue require all these cells to interlock with each other, we use, we, you can commonly see desmosome. You can also commonly see the other two type of the intercellular protein, such as the tight junction and the gap junction. Tight junction will, will make it very tight. It will be no fluid to filter through. Desmosome is not as tight, but they hold each other very well. Gap junction is the bridge between two cells. At this point, you just need to know the desmosome. This is very common. You see it here in the skin. Uh, you probably also saw it already in uh, in the uh, in the cardiovascular system. The, the heart muscle also uh, interlock with each other using the desmosome. In this region, we also has one monocyte, one macrophage cells. That's called the Langerhans cells. So that's this layer. So they provide the, uh, if there's any virus or bacteria intrusion, these can come there to engulf it, to digest it, Langerhans cells, All right? Above that is the stratum granulosum. So here we see the granule, meaning that they have uh, part particles inside of cells. We, if we see the, the picture we can see it start to generate some dots like this granules right there. So these are the uh, protein aggregation or protein uh, keratin. So we have the keratin as well as a derivative of the keratin called the uh, keratin right here. This granule are keratin and uh, Keratohyalin. These granules are called the lamellar granules. Uh, and so this is the transition from live cell to the dead cells. When they gradually die away, the nucleus will disappear, the, gran the organelles will be disappeared and the remaining will be only the cell skin, skin of the cell, the cell membrane, as well as all these fibrous protein, keratin, keratohyalin, uh, and the cell membrane. 
this is the outer layer of the skin forming the outer layer of the skin as well as our hair and the nail. Know the same, these skin products are all the same, hair, nails, and uh, straighten lucidum and the straightened corneum are all made by the similar material, the keratin. The original product is keratin. So this one showing you the um, uh, additional, uh, in the, uh, uh, above the granulosum is the cornea, if it's thin skin, we have the lucidum, that's a thick skin. Here we have, uh, see, we can see additional like uh, granule. We call this granule the elidin. And uh, this elidin is different from the uh, loose, uh, sorry, lamina, lamina granule in the straightened granulosum that in the straightened lucidum, these elidins are more like lipid protein, protein called the uh, carotino hyaline. So, and, and that will make it this region to be more waterproof that water cannot go through our skin. Then the most superficial layer is the straightened cornea. Those are already dead cells. You can see, I like this picture showing you that straightened cornea is pretty thick compared to the other layer. Here is the uh, straightened uh, germinative. This is the straightened basidi, the very bottom layer hosts these basal cells. Spinosin, granulosin, lucidin. So this is a thick, thick skin. But comparably, these layer, these are all dead skin, uh, straightened cornea. You see how how thick this is even more than the other combined. So the process of these dead cell production uh, process is also called uh, keratinite. That basically means that the cells become full of keratin and uh, the other organelles start to be disappeared. This is called, also called the cornification. These, that skin will be totally replaced in about four weeks. So your skin, no matter when it's produced, the very outer portion will be replaced in about every four weeks. So it's fair to say that you are a different you compared to four weeks ago. So you are you are you are totally outside wise. You know, outside will be totally a different skin. At least that layer is totally different in four weeks. Then we have uh, um, underneath that is the dermis. What's the important part of dermis? A lot of tissues, right? And uh, vessels, nerve. What is the cells of the skin in dermis? In addition to all those tissues, the major cells here is the fibroblast. So in the epidermis is the keratinocyte. In the dermis is the fibroblast. Now, fibroblast, the keratinocyte produce keratin. Keratin is the intracellular protein. Fibroblast produce the elastin and the collagen. So those are the extracellular matrix. All right, so they secret it to fill in the space, fill in the interstitial, interstitial fluid, interstitial space. Uh, these two are different, even though these two are both extracellular matrix. Elastin is more elastic, like our rubber, right? So it allows the skin to extend. That's why we can bend 
right? That you, you won't be worried that your skin gonna get broken if you bend it, right? And uh, the collagen, in contrast, provide the strength, so they are not too much elastic. They still hold together. So it's a good balance between elastin and the collagen is, is very, very important to allow us to freely move our skin and the muscle and the bones, as well as keep the skin very uh, strong, hold everything together. These dermites has two layers. One is called the papillary. This is the area just underneath the dermite, dermal papilla. And the, underneath that is the radicular layer. So let's look at these two layers. Let's do that right here. So this is the one. So this is the epidermis that we already introduced. Underneath that is the dermal papillae, right here, dermal papillae. And uh, you, one thing you need to know though, the epidermite doesn't have the blood, okay? All the blood, the further they can go is to the dermis. And that's why these basal, uh, the stratum basella, uh, basidi, sorry, stratum basidi, these basal cells can be well neutralized. While they are further away from these Basal uh, stratum basella, this um, this uh, layer, they are further away from the nutrients, so they will die. They cannot maintain a life. So when if you get a cut, if you didn't see the blood, good good that you didn't really damage any skin, the real skin yet. You only damage the epidermis. If you see the blood, then you already damage up to the derm, der, dermis layer. So here, this dermis has two layers. One is the popular, popular layer. The other one is reticular. And all these are produced from all these like fiber stuff are all produced from the cell called the fibroblast. And this fiber, fiber stuff, this is uh, collagen and uh, elastin, uh, is more condensed in the reticular layer. It's more loosened in the papillary layer. So let's make these two separated. In here, we have the vessel, we have the sensory receptor, we have the nerve. Uh, so, that's that. So that's these two layer. Papillary layer is the uh, top portion of these dermis, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a neighbor of the epidermis, uh, the uh, stratum basilar layer of the epidermis, and uh, their their their. Their border is not a straight border. Their border is like a, a, a mountain border, like up and down, up and down. It's called the thermal papilla. In the papilla layer, it also has some extracellular matrix, and, uh, but it's not very well wired together. So uh, in this region, we have some uh, Macrophage to provide the first line. Here is the one that uh, we have the blood supply. So all these immune cells, the blood-borne immune cells are able to reach here without too much of the effort because they are part of the blood. You need to know that above that to the epidermis, it will be difficult. So that region would not be covered by the majority of the immune cell. The epidermis are supported. Their immune is provided by the Langerhans cells that we talked earlier. And in this region, we have the uh, immune cells, we have the phagocytes. The major blood phagocyte cells are the uh, monocytes, defense cells, meaning that immune cells. 
We also have a lot of the small vessels, lymphatic vessels, nerve, and the sensory. So in the epidermis, we have the Merkel cells to conduct. Here we have even more. If you look at this one here, in the epidermis, we have the Merkel cells. It's very small. You don't see it here. But in the dermis, we have even more. We have some here, some here. You see, those are the receptor, mechanical receptor that will transduce any deformation to the skin to form a signal, the nerve signal to our body. So we know that, that uh, the, the sensation of the touch, All right? So that's the mechanical receptor cells. Let's do a little summary about the mechanical receptor cells we can see in the skin. We already see the Merkel cells. This is the epidermis, uh, lower portion of the epidermis. We have the Merkel cells. When we touch it, it, they will get excited, send signal to the nerve, tell the brain. If we look into this region, we see the neurotransmitter released from the uh, Merkel cells to the nerve. In the dermis, in this region, we have two types of the receptor. One is called the mesenter corpuscle. Mesenter corpuscle is usually in the papilla layer. Lower, deeper region, we will see the other one that is called the lamina. Sorry, lamina. It's also called the persinian. That's more common. Persinian corpuscle, persinian corpuscle. So that's these two. Merkel cells in the epidermis, persinian and the mesenter's corpuscle are in the dermis. Mesenter is more superficial. They are in the papilla layer. Lam persinian is more in the reticular layer. So if we look at this one here, it didn't label it, but, but this will be the mesenter corpuscle. Mesenter corpus. This will be the persinian corpus. All right. These two, though, these two are actually formed by a group of cells. So that's this one. This is the persinian. This is the mesenter. You can see that this blue standing here are cells. This is called the lam lamellar cells, lamellar cells. Uh, different kind of organization form different corpuscle. They, if it's, it's stimulated, if it's deformation, they will send signal to the nerve and send to the brain. So that's these three major type of the, they are four type of the uh, mechanical receptor, but uh, these three are probably, they, they are all very important, but in the textbook, they only mention about these three. So let's just worry about these three for now. So why else? So the, 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 uh, the popular layer uh, is, is uh, more loose. The reticular layer is more condensed. Here is the fibroblast that is a cell to produce the elastic protein, collagen protein. Reticular layer uh, is more heavily wired region. Uh, the wire is the elastin and the collagen. This region is also very well uh, vascularized, meaning that it has a lot of blood supply to it and the sensory nerve and the sympathetic nerve. So that's that reticular layer. Underneath this reticular layer is the hypodermis. Hypodermis, the only thing you need to know is that it's full of the fat. It's not full of, but the major components there is the fat. So it provides a good insulation. So to prevent the loss of the heat of our body. And uh,
and uh, and this region is also called subcutaneous. If you ever heard about subcutaneous, that means here. All right. Now, uh, another important concept is the <clears throat> pigmentation, the color of the skin. What make it the color? Of course, genetic it plays an important role. But what's the major component of the color? That is the melanin. Melanin coming from the melanocytes. So the activity, the amount of the melanocytes plays a major role to show the color of the skin. The skin color also uh, has a component from the carotene and uh, hemoglobin. So these are the proteins. They, they are color protein. They, they have color. Uh, and uh, hemoglobin is a protein in the red blood cells and the carotene. So they are all the present their distribution present the color of the skin. The melanocyte is the major one and the melanocyte is important because their production is related to the sun exposure. They produce the melanin and that absorb the light so it can prevent the damage from the UV light. Melanocyte is in the epidermis. They, uh, they will provide the uh, melanin. When they produce the melanin, not just one melanocyte has a color. They will release those melanin. They will pack it in the vesicle. These vesicles are called the uh, melanosomes. They will transport this, this um, envelope in a way to the other cells. When other cells take it, open it, they will distribute that uh, melanin to their cell. So the color will be homogeneously distributed to, to the entire uh, epidermis. This is the mechanism our body built to prevent the damage from UV, UV light. So if there is light, if there is a sun exposure, if it's sun exposure, it's important. If there's a balance, we need some sun exposure in order to generate vitamin D, but too much of it will cause cell damage. So if it's too much, then the uh, melanocytes will get excited. It will release the melanosome Melanosin will be distributed to other cells. So this is the melanocyte. The others are the keratinocyte. Here is a keratinocyte. And uh, so even though they are not melanocytes, they will receive this melanosin from the melanocyte. And, uh, and so they will also open up this envelope and uh, to make themselves have similar dye, the uh, melanin. And by doing so, these cells, this layer will be able to absorb the light in order to prevent the damage of the body from the light. If there's no light, then the color, then the melanocytes will not be excited, will not be triggered, then the color will become more pale. So that's that. And another component of the skin is the hair. So you may think hair is different, very different from the skin. However, the formation of the hair as well as the formation of the nail is same idea as the formation of the skin. Meaning, meaning the same idea, of, make it similar, the same idea of the formation of the epidermis. Meaning they are keratinocyte meaning they are basal layer, they are stem cells, gradually push the dead cells to the surface. And then this dead cell get keratinization, keratinization, keratinized. And so the cells become, only become the material to form the outer layer of skin as well as the hair from these stem cells as well as our nail. So nail, 
if you cut it, you don't damage anything. Those are dead cells. Another thing is that if, if the hair got cut falling on the ground, they will not grow because they are, no, they are not connected with the stem cell, our body. All right, so the hair, hair are in the epidermis. All right, don't get confused that they are deep. They are dermis, no, they are epidermis, okay? So that's why the epidermis has the stem cell. They are located in the uh, straightened basidi here, straightened basidi. So down here, down here, down here, and then up here, this blood, does epidermis has blood? No. So you see this blood, they are in the dermis. And then, so this is the papillae, just like the other papillae you see before, just like this papillae, just like this papillae. So this is the papillae. And then underneath here, we have the stem cell, like this one here, this is the stem cell. They are in the stratum. A city. So here in the are all in the epidermis. Hair can be viewed as two portion. One is called the hair shaft, right here. Hair shaft. The other portion is called the hair follicle. The cut off of these two portions is the tunnel. So if it's in not turning the tunnel yet, we call it, however you can see that this is transition. This is not entirely clear difference, but generally we just consider that everything underneath this tunnel, even though they are still in the epidermis, this portion, this portion called the follicle, all right? So uh, basically from the surface of this tunnel toward the bottom of the tunnel is a gradual change. Uh, uh, above this tunnel, it's very much the same. This one uh, is easier. Hair shaft, it has the collagen, right? Not collagen, the keratin. These are the keratinized stat cell. Here, uh, typically we consider it has uh, three uh, 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 layer uh, or circulate together, uh, eccentrical layer. And uh, uh, inner is the uh, medulla, outer is the cortex, the outer outer is the cuticle, so that is the hair shift, but basically that's all dead cells. Medulla is the dead cell, cortex is keratinized cell. Cuticle is further, harder keratinized cell. So those are basically the same thing. It's just deader than the dead, the older dead versus the newer dead. All right, and uh, the follicle, uh, uh, that's the region that we, are, we will see the transition from the dipping down to the follicle. We will see in the bottom of this follicle, it's called hair bulb. This is the region that's the region we will see is very similar like the straightened basidi that we will see stem cells produced new cells. So, so we see here, what we do see here, we, we see here is, so we call this one, it's hair bulb. And uh, here in the epidermis, we have the basal cells. In the hair, we call it hair matrix. So hair matrix is the region host of this stem cells because it's called hair matrix. These stem cells is also called matrix cell. This is basically the same thing as the basal cells.
but in the hair, we call it hair matrix cells. So let's look at this hair matrix cells. Hair matrix cell, you can see it right here. They are, they basically uh, same as the basal cells in the epidermis. These matrix cells are the stem cells. They continuously divide it to form keratin, keratinocytes. The dead keratin, keratinocytes will push the hair out. And these are on the top of the dermal papilla right here. Dermal papilla we, here is also, as I show you before here, dermal papilla. This is the dermal papilla. It didn't really see it here, but it is, okay? It's in here. And this dermal papilla, these dermal papilla is also called the hair papilla. Here we call it dermal papilla, but it's also called the hair papilla. That's, that's the same thing. That's where we have the blood supply, the capillary supply to the, to the stem cells to the, um, the very uh, deep uh, layer of the, of the uh, and also the most superficial layer of the dermis. In this hair follicle, in this hair follicle, uh, it consider there are three layer, uh, the the inner is the newly formed. So this inner is the newly formed uh, keratinocyte. The outer is the basal cells, uh, the matrix cells. And the, the, the very outer is the uh, growthy membrane. So this is the boundary between the epidermis and the dermis. So that is that. The hair grow uh, in three phases. Uh, this matrix cell uh, will go through a rapid growing division phase. This is called the anagen phase. This phase take about two to seven years. They very rapidly divide themselves, produce the new keratinocytes, and then push this hair growing out. After that, it will be, they will rest. Uh, this, uh, the function of these stem cells will, will slow down. And uh, this is called the uh, catagen phase. This phase only take about two to three weeks. And the following that is called the telogen phase. This telogen phase is the separation of the hair follicle from the blood supply. So that is, uh, I can show you this one here. That's the picture shown here. In this telophase, before we have this papilla, this papilla is a blood supply from the dermis. Uh, in the telogen phase, these epidermis will completely separate from the papillae. So there will be no blood supply. And uh, without blood supply, these basal cells will gradually die away. So, and uh, the entire hair will be falling apart. And uh, then it will, these will also regenerate again, because here we still have the stem cell. They can migrate down here and, uh, and, uh, and uh, regenerate again. So that's the three layer. Anagen, ketogen, telogen. So if we have the, the quiz, it will be what's how many phases that could be the one quiz or the sequence of these three phases, endogen, ketogen, telogen.
All right, so that's the hair. Another similar components of the skin is the nail. Very similar in a way that they are keratinocytes. They are dead keratinocytes. So in here, they are formed in the hair matrix. The nail, these keratinocytes are formed in the nail root. So nail root is the region we have this We have this stem cell. They will divide it and grow further up, become dead, keratinized dead cells, and they become the nail. Uh, this the outer portion of this nail uh, is connected with the outer portion of our skin. They are all. Um, they are all uh, straightened corneum. So this is straightened corneum. This is straightened corneum. This portion is called the hyponychian. So that's that. If we look at your skin, you're probably wondering why they are two color, right? Here is more pinkish. This one is more white. Why is that? Um, if you don't know, now you should know, right? So this. White area is called Lununa. And, uh, and uh, um, this region is the region covering the nail root. So underneath that, we have the stem cells. And uh, here we have the thicker layer in order to protect our skin, uh, to protect our stem cells. This is the nail matrix cover the nail matrix. Uh, here is the, and uh, here is the nail root, nail matrix. All these regions contain the stem cells. So that's, that's that. What else? In the skin, uh, we have the hair, we have the nail. We also have some glands. These glands, uh, we basically have three types of the glands. These three types of glands are uh, sweat glands and uh, sebaceous glands. Let's look at the sweat glands first. We have two types of these sweat glands. One is called the acrine sweat glands. The other one is called apocrine sweat glands. The, they are different. Their sweat are different. The acrine sweat glands produce more watery sweat. So it's the hypotonic sweat. The apocrine sweat uh, is more dense, more thicker, thicker glands, thick, thicker sweat. So that's the difference. Their sweats are different. The other is that the apocrine are associate glands are associated with the hair follicle. So that's that. Uh, sweat is important for the thermal regulation. When our body is hot, uh, we need to reduce the heat. We will produce the sweat in order to bring the temperature to the surface and that will distribute the heat from the core into the surface. And uh, so that's the function of the sweat. Uh, Another gland is called the sebaceous glands. These glands are uh, producing not the sweat, but this produce the oily fluid. And uh, uh, they provide, they are not the one to control the thermal regulation. This one is the one to provide the lubrication. You know, it's a natural ointment, right? Natural. What's that? The uh, the thing you put on your skin, right? Ointment, yeah.
I forgot. Yeah. So, you know, cosmetic stuff put on your skin to make it look more. So this natural one, and uh, this is more oil. This is like oil uh, fluid also contains some antibacterial material to it. So, and uh, this is uh, associate, uh, this is, uh, uh, this uh, produce the, uh, uh, the oil fruit is called the sebum. That's why we call it sebaceous glands. These are secreted. Their secretion is triggered, can be triggered by the androgen, so the sex hormone. That's why um, when people uh, reach the puberty, they will have more of this production. And uh, uh, in some situation, they will lead to the overproduce of this oil fluid and induce the infection called the uh, acne. Right. So that's the special glands. All right, we talk. We will talk about the acne later. Don't worry about that. All right. So, so that is the components of the skin. Now, what are the function of the skin? Skin has several functions. One is the protection, the first line of this defense, and uh, um. Is a layer, it's a physical layer. So any bacteria will not be able to enter. Uh, this also provides a sensory function so we can touch. We have full of the tactile sensory all over our skin. That serve a lot of function that we can touch. That also serve another function called the proprioception that you don't need to see your hand and you know where they are because their sensor will tell the brain that I'm right here. So you know it, you don't need to see it, right? You can grab anything without watching it because your hand, your hand don't have the eye, but your, your hand tell your brain the location. It's called the proprioception. So that's another sensory. Uh, it also sense pain. And that's another, it's not just sensory, it's also protection. So if you got injured, you will feel pain and that, that prevent you from withdraw your body from the source of that pain. It's also thermal regulation. Um, sweat is one way to regulate our body's temperature. We also can regulate body temperature through the uh, blood vessel. So if the temperature is cold, we will reduce the blood supply into the skin. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, in, and in that case, we will keep the temperature inside the body. If the body is too hot, then we will increase the blood supply to the skin. So the, the, we will have a situation that the, the fluid will, will reach into the more superficial layer area of the skin and that will allow more evaporation of the heat from the body into the air. So that's some more regulation. And uh, it's skin also very important to conduct the vitamin D synthesis. Vitamin D is important to increase the calcium absorption in our body. So if your body is lack of the calcium, uh, that will lead to several diseases, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, it's not healthy. So you can take the calcium supplement, which won't work well. The better way to do it is to have vitamin D, because when you eat calcium, calcium won't be able to get reabsorbed in our body unless you have sufficient vitamin D. So vitamin D is a key and uh, get some sun exposure is a good way to provide our body vitamin D. So let's look into this one though, vitamin D synthesis in our skin. This procedure uh, is very important and, uh, 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 and uh, you, should, you guys should know. The first thing you need to know is that where do we synthesize vitamin D, the skin, right? 
Uh, and uh, or vitamin uh, skin can produce, sun exposure to the skin can produce what? Vitamin D, okay? So that, that's an easy quiz question. Uh, and then the procedure to produce the active vitamin D needs to go through almost three organs. The first one, the skin. Skin will produce the inactive form of the vitamin D. They will convert the cholesterol into the inactive form of vitamin D. This is called the uh, cholecalciferol. This is called vitamin D3. Then we need to go to the other, go through the other two organs. The first is the liver uh, to change the D3 to 25 OHD. This is the hydroxy lace to add OH to the 25 location to make it 25 OHD. And then this is also called the calcifidile. And then it will go through the other organ that the kidney will do another hydroxylase. Now this time it's on the location one. So we will have 125 OHD. And that is the active vitamin D. And then this will X the function uh, to absorb the calcium in our body. So if you eat, your diet contain calcium, these will help our intestine to absorb the calcium. And that's how you get calcium, okay? So that's important to have calcium. Vitamin D's function to absorb uh, calcium and uh, phosphorus in the small intestine. That's the region we absorb nutrients after we eat them, right? If the body has not, do not have sufficient vitamin D, then the body will not have enough calcium. The major area, it will affect a lot of the organ, but one of the uh, organ got impact the most is the bone. So it will form this osteomalacia. That is the softening of the bone, the death deficiency of the, the consequence of the deficiency of vitamin D. So vitamin D is important. Vitamin D to provide us the capacity for calcium absorption. Uh, our body also has hormone. Later, you probably will learn about the endocrine system. You will learn about the parathyroid hormone. This one produces parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid gland produces parasite hormone. Uh, that will also play an important role in calcium absorption. Now, vitamin D uh, from our skin transport to the liver got uh, 25 OH on it. Then it will transport to the kidney to form the 125 OHD. This one is one to be activated. Act active form of the vitamin D. This one will then act on the small intestine to allow calcium absorption. And that way we can increase the calcium in the body. So that's a function of the calcium. So those are the normal function of the skin. Now let's talk about before the end in the, the I will use about some seven slides to talk about common or not so common uh, diseases. Uh, when people talk about this disease, you have some idea after you know taking this course. So the first one is the cancer, skin cancer. Skin cancer is the overproduction of these cancer cells. And um, there are three major types of the skin cancer cells. Uh, they are more than that, but these three uh, uh, are more important, more clinically relevant. So the, the first one is the basal cell carcinoma. That is the overproduction of this stem cell. 
this base of cells is already can divide it rapidly to provide the keratinocytes. And that's what we need to replace all these dead skin cells. But their production is very well regulated. If it's not regulated, we may have overproduction of these stem cells. And that is the basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common type of the skin cancer. If this basal cell produce okay, but the keratinocytes is too much, we have too much of the keratinocytes, then we have another type of skin cancer that is called the squamous, squamous cell carcinoma. That is the overproduction of the keratinocytes. We also have another type of skin cancer that is the overproduction of the melanocytes. Uh, this one, even though it's not the most common type of skin cancer, but this one is the most fatal one. It's because that they have high metastasis rate. Metastasis rate. That means that they will migrate from the skin to other area. They will go into the lymphocyte, go into the lymphatic vessel and propagate to different parts of the body. And it's very difficult to trace. So for the other two, when there's a tumor, you see the sign is on the skin, we can do surgery to remove them. But if it's melano, melan, melan, melanoma, melanoma, then these cancer cells may propagate toward the other part of the body and it will be more difficult to treat. So that's the most fatal type of the skin cancer. All right, another skin disorders uh, include, we will talk about these, uh, asthma, acne, injury, we will talk about this. Asthma is one that um, allergy, so if there, uh, if you're, if you, is is individual dependent. If your body is uh, sensitive, respond to certain type of the foreign particle, uh, respond meaning the immune response that your mast cell will release the histamine and uh, you will see the swelling of the skin. And the, those are typical response to the allergic response. In the skin, it's, uh, it's shown as the asthma. In other part of the body, they may show different symptoms. Eczema. In the in the in the in the in the uh, in the bronchial, this airway, they will also respond to the allergen. That will be the asthma, right? The narrowing of that. Um, that airway. So eczema and asthma, even though they sound very similar, and in fact, they, they, they run under very similar mechanism. They are allergic, uh, over hyperallergic response into the allergen. So that's that. And the acne is the overproduction of over uh, activity of these sebaceous glands. This is usually typically uh, triggered by the, uh, the androgen. So after the puberty, you may see these young people will you know, have the uh, acne and, uh, and that is because of these hormonal quick change trigger the sebaceous glands to produce the sebum, this oil fluid, and to induce the infection, too much of it to cause the infection in the, in the skin. Another is the some type of the other different type of the injury, the burns, wounds, scars, and, uh, and uh, uh, 
calluses. Calluses. Let's talk about this though. That's um, burns. So burns is the the uh, the damage to the skin. Burns uh, can be classified based on the area of the damage or the degree of the severity. If it is the area, we you, we can use the uh, uh, rule called rule of nines. So basically, rule of nine means the surface area in different portion of the body can be considered as the vector of nine, rule of nines. Say the surface in the head and the neck is 9% of the total body surface. Each of these upper limbs is 9% of the total body surface. Each of these lower limbs is 19, 18% of the surface of the total body surface. Trunk is 36% of the body surface. So that's rule of nines. We can also classify the burns based on the degree of severity. It means that how deep the damage is caused by the burn. So if it's only the epidermis, it's called the first degree burn. If it's epidermis, part of the dermis is called the second degree burn. If it's the dermis, then it's third degree burn. You know, if it's dermis, it's very much damaged the nerve already. All right. And, uh, and uh, the fourth degree is further down to affect the bones and the muscle. So that's this fourth degree. That's also a quick question that if the damage only in the dermis, epidermis, which degree? First degree. If it's already in the bone and the muscle, which degree? Fourth degree. You need to know that if it's reached to the third and the fourth degree, this the nerve already got injured, almost completely gone. And uh, one of the nerve is the sensory nerve, right? And, uh, and uh, one of the sensory is the pain sensory. It's called the nociceptor. So if it's only, if it's reached to the third and the fourth degree, the patient actually don't feel too much pain, although the damage is very severe because the pain sensor is already got injured. They cannot feel the pain anymore. However, the damage is very bad. So that's the burns. Now scars, how do we form the scars? When you see the scars, nobody, like, I assume nobody really likes the scars, but why do we have the scars? Scar is the skin. However, this is the collagen rich skin. And, uh, and that's because that in the epi, if the damage down into the dermis, then you will trigger the cell in the dermis, which is the fibroblast. Fibroblast is good at producing the collagen, elastin, this acrocellular matrix. So they will try to help. However, their help is to produce collagen. So they will form this collagen reached skin and that form the scars. If their production is too much, it's called the hypertrophic, hypertrophic scars. It's also called the uh, keroid. Uh, we may also have the atrophic scars. Uh, sometimes we see these sunken appearance scars due to the acne or chicken pox. We don't really come and see chicken pox anymore, but we may see it in the acne. And uh, this is the, uh, this basically is due to the damage down into the Thermize the fibroblast trying to help forming this uh, collagen rich skin. And that's the scars. Another type of the damage is called the bad source. 
Best source is due to the over prolonged suppression to the skin to a to to a to a condition that the skin do not have the blood supply because the prolonged pressure for a long time and those cells die from it. No blood supply is a ischemia. When they this cell die, it will trigger the inflection infection and these dead cells cannot protect the body from the outside bacteria or the uh, yeah, bacteria. And so this bacteria will enter and then it will trigger more infection to it. And so that is the, uh, the we commonly see this in the patient in the hospital that that's why we need to uh, constantly, not constantly, but regularly rotate the body in order to prevent the formation of the bad source turning the patients. Another condition of the skin is called the stretch marks. That is because that um, the skin has elastic, elastin, so it can, can be elastic. However, if, if the, if the, um, if the uh, if the stretch is is over the limit of the elastin, then it will re it will it will show appear a uh, stretch marks. This commonly seen in the uh, uh, pregnant woman. This uh, enlargement of the fetus in the body will leave the stretch marks on the skin of the mother. Another condition is called the. Uh, Calosis, calosis, sorry, calosis. So calosis is the thickening of the epidermis. That's because that when part of our skin uh, experience the prolonged abrasion, then the basal cells trying to will try to produce a thicker skin in order to protect that area. And that thicker skin will become the calosis. And uh, this calosis, we may also see the horns. Horn is just another type of the calosis. It's just they form this elastic, e at the oval shape of this calosis. We commonly see it in our toes uh, because of the shoes doesn't really fit. If the shoe doesn't really fit the, 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 the feet, then over time of this abrasion will, will result in this calosis. So that's that. All right, so that finished it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you guys. See you next time.